longer piece of wood, just one of them, clamped into um, a table or if you've got someone who can just hold it for you. Um, and then get your other piece of wood. I'll just warn you, while, while we're doing this, make sure you've got your screwdriver or whatever handy. So now, what you want to do is you want to check that everything is flush. So just make sure that everything, if, it, if it's going to be like this when you screw it in, it's going to be much harder to get the whole thing square at the end. So just try and make sure that you're flush on this side, this side and at the back before you start screwing anything. So make sure and then Now once you've got the one in, you've still got some room to be able to move it around if need be. So that was slightly out there. Again, holding it tight, screw it down. Once you've got the one side in, it makes it a lot easier to get the other side. Okay, and again, trying to make sure as well that this piece of wood is as straight as possible. If you want, grab yourself a spirit level plunk it on the side and just make sure you can get it in straight. I'll show you how to use the spirit level in a minute. The more time you take doing this, the less time you have to start messing around later on to make sure it's all square. So just take a little bit more time. There you go. Now, as I went in then, you saw the whole thing just rock a little bit. So again, come back, make sure everything is square and... Okay, so that's the first side, and that's basically the hardest side to do because you know you had to hold everything tight and so on so this side we now get our piece of wood plonk it on the top all the same things again though make sure you get it in the right place now what you will notice probably is your other side won't line up initially but once you've screwed in one side you can twist it and it will twist itself into being square Now, as you can see, it's all wonky, but it is just a case of grabbing it and straightening it up. And that is exact almost. Sorry if I hit you there. Um, even now, if I've made a mistake and it is not square, we've still got room to fix that in a bit. But Let's put that up here. Ways to check it square and level would be with a set square or speed square, and that was looking quite good. Um, up in the all the corners. If you take your tape measure and measure from corner to corner, and then do the other side, they should match up exactly because they should be the exact same distance. But if it's a little bit less, just give it a little knock and so on. But we're going to be putting planks of wood across here now. So if it is slightly out, then we can just pull it to one side, put the nails in, and that will slowly start to hold it dead square. When using a spirit level, if you want to make sure it's level, as long as your floor's level, which are often in houses it is, but obviously always make sure. So, <laughs> ironically enough, ours is just ever so slightly not. But inside all spirit levels, there is a bubble that's moving along. And those two lines there represent the dead center where the bubble should sit. If it is level, the bubble should rest directly in the center, which it doesn't for our floor. If you have a look, but if you're trying to make sure something's level, this should be slightly up this way. This is probably because this is a wet room floor 
and it means that all the water will pool in one specific place. But now, say you want to check to see if your, your frame is correct, place the spirit level, I'm going to have to do it upside down, place your spirit level against the side, and then you want to check this one. So this is just slightly off, but if we just bend it ever so slightly, we can get it dead flush. So this isn't far off from being square anyway. Okay, so the next job, can you hold that a sec, is to make the, the pieces of wood in between here, which will then make the entire sort of level. So what we need to do now is take the, the last two pieces of wood, luckily enough, that we've got and cut them directly in half like my wonderful wife suggested right at the beginning. Um, if we hadn't have done it her way we would have not had enough wood and I would have had to be grovelling for the rest of my life. So I'm glad I listened. So yeah, we're going to cut these directly in half and then we're going to connect them in the corners, each corner and then the other the top can go on top after we've laid planks on them. Okay, so once again, they are dead on 100. Well, this one's dead on 100, which means I can put it, cut it dead on 50. So, because I'm using a circular saw and I'm only cutting a small, sec um, a small cross section, I can, I can just make a little dot because this will cut it dead straight for me. Now when we connect these two together what we'll do is we'll be having these posts set up like this. and so on over this side um, and that then is going to be connected on the top uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of wood down here as the floorboards so what we need to do now is we need to fill this area with planks of wood let's measure this it's 50 centimeters exactly so that's handy so we need to cut all of our pieces of wood at 50 centimetres. This isn't it put together, we've just literally just rested everything on it. So I like to do this at this point so that I can then decide what needs changing and how it's going to go together. Let me just talk you through a few bits. This, this piece here represents where we're going to have a boxed in area for them to sleep at night so that they're warm. Um, I've put this piece along here to make a slight slope for the roof. I had toyed with the idea of making feather edge wood which is basically wood that looks a little bit like this and so you can you can place it on and it will overlap the next piece and so on. However, I nearly killed myself doing it, so I've decided against it. Um, I said in the last video, basically, I'm making it all out of pallets. That is true, except I've obviously got some netting for the front part so that the uh, rabbits can have a bit of outside light and so on. But I need to make the inner box here very, very comfortable for them, so it's very warm at night. So I just have to decide how I'm doing that as I go along. Okay, in the last episode you saw me um, nail down these pieces, which is absolutely fine, but what I need to do now is I need to put a couple of screws in each of the first two, because when this goes outside we're actually going to raise it up on bricks just in the corners. Now if I, obviously, if I put a brick under here now with just a nail in, it's going to push it up. So I'm going to screw it in, and it just gives it a bit more support as well. Now there was no thought bit process behind those, that drilling except trying to keep it away from the actual screws that we held the initial frame with. Um, we'll soon see if I missed any. Yeah. 
again we're just going to countersink it to make sure that there's no um, bits that can hurt the rabbit's feet or anything. Let me just point out here a sec something. Just there, I've made holes that are really deep. This wood is very, very soft and I didn't mean to, so that is, that's a bit too deep. That's virtually like I'm drilling to China there. Okay, now we'll see if we've missed the screws or not. When you're drilling these in, uh, screwing these in, try not to go too far down. The drill, uh, the screw will keep trying to eat into the wood. If you go too far, you will end up splitting the wood. So just let it um, tighten up the wood against the other piece and leave it there. Don't try and keep going. Now, like I said in the um, in the description on the first video. This is going to be a really heavy duty um, rabbit hutch, but it's built to last. Um, eventually, when the rabbits do die, it will still be there. It will still be rocking and rolling, so we can use it for something else as well. And because of the, you know, the pallet wood is heat treated and pressure treated and so on, the wood should last without any problems. The one thing I will explain is the reason I'm putting it up on uh, blocks is I wouldn't want this part of the pallet or this part of the hutch to be in the water all the time um, you know when it rains and stuff so it's okay having lots of water hitting it and rolling down but don't try try not to keep it in so it's pooling up around the bottom because you'll find that it will rot um, quicker that way <laughs> <laughs> 